but mostly they are in China captured. Majority of North Koreans are in China and they end up in four places as a North Korean defector in China. One is you end up in organ harvesting. So they what? buy you and take your organs out and discard you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think it's not like one single thing. Like even when I wake up in a nice mattress, like I've never seen a mattress in my life in North Korea. When I get into a warm shower, I've never had a shower in my life, you know, when I have a refrigerator, like everything. And this is what college students should be watching. Um, so since you've been in America, what is one thing that you think America or Americans take for granted that you love? Uh, it's choice. Choice? I don't think Americans understand what a unique thing to have a choice. Choice to where you live, what you do, who you marry, why you even eat. When you go to restaurants, you have at least dozens of them to choose from. In North Korea, we don't have a cookbook because nobody can afford the ingredients to make different kinds of food. So I think oh that's what I see that Americans don't understand how unique the way of life is here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Alejandra, I'm from Venezuela, and I experienced not the same uh, scenario, but obviously uh, the dictator over there is a friend of Kim Jong-un. And I, was, I just have a question, because um, the way I see the generation now is that they're so indoctrinated that there's pretty much no way to revert that damage that the left have caused. And do you think any possibility that we can change that in the near future, maybe? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I definitely see that it's, I think, you know, like people from Venezuela, Cuba, or Iran, and North Korea, none of them want to live under socialism. <laughs> That's why we... And you know what's crazy? You know what's really insane about this? This woman is telling you that where she's from, it is so bad that the concept of a cookbook does not exist because everyone is so poor that they literally cannot afford ingredients. I don't care where you go in America. If you go to a neighborhood, someone has a house, I don't care where. There's a cookbook or there's a concept of a cookbook or there's a set of ingredients that they write down. They have a favorite recipe. They have a favorite meal for their family. She's saying where she's from, that doesn't exist. And not only is she saying that, she's saying socialism is so bad where she's from, nobody wants to live under it. Yet you have people in America, day in and day out, who fight for these things, who say, oh, I don't want to live here, who say, oh, we should be under this set of ruling. This woman is telling you, you do not want that. America is great, but you have a group of young people who refuse to acknowledge that. It's sad. Let's get back. Gabe, then all these people living in democracy, they want to live, bring the socialism to this country. And the reason why I think they think that way is because of the American education system became a huge propaganda tool. It became an indoctrination camp, like North Korean schoolrooms. And I think once we realize what is getting into our children's minds, and also we realize how American media became liars, and they became a propaganda tool as well. Once we see that, and this hijacking of these big institutions, then I think we can change that. But first is definitely education, that our children getting brainwashed, and my son is too. I, I worry about that every day, and people really don't understand how bad it got in, in this country right now. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Omar. Well, I think your story is massively inspirational. Something that was just going in my mind when you were talking was in transition from North Korea into American culture, you know, experiencing that culture shock. Did you have like a singular moment where it just hit you that like, okay, things are different now? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, every second <laughs> things are different. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, 
in my dreams, I am still a lot of times a captive. I am still in North Korea, but when I wake up, it's not. So, uh, yeah, I think it's not like one single thing. Like even when I wake up in a nice mattress, like I've never seen a mattress in my life in North Korea. When I get into what? a warm shower, I've never had a shower in my life, you know, when I have a refrigerator, like everything is literally a miracle. This is, <laughs> and this is what college students should be watching. This is what they should be watching because there's this delusional and very arrogant privileged take that a lot of people have here where you have someone who's not from here just privileged to have a hot shower a mattress a mattress my my, my apologies where she's from they don't have a mattress i'm pretty sure everyone watching this video has a mattress or at least something soft to sleep on a hot shower she's never experienced a hot shower before and she's having to go speak at college campuses just to convince children or young adults that they have a life worth living, that they have privilege. She has to convince them that they have privilege. This is terrible, man. Thank you. Hi, my name is Danny. Uh, you talked a lot about human rights activism. What's a good way for a college student to get involved with that? What's a good first step? Yes, uh, first step is do not join the United Nations. <laughs> I mean, they are the biggest, most useless organization I've ever seen in my lifetime. I'm sorry, but I have spoken at UN multiple times and complete degenerates i'm so sorry <laughs> just i mean they let north korea china saudi arabia they let them decide who are the human rights violators this is a joke right it's a show so when you want to become a human rights activist i think it's really important to find your own path and not following this mainstream and I mean, BLM people say they are like fighting for human rights too, right? So it's not at this point embarrassing to even say that because human rights got hijacked by so many social justice warriors. They're like, what are you actually fighting for? <laughs> so yeah, I think don't look for big institutions and it can, it needs a lot of innovation. So like think about it as a you know business, we need to innovate this NGO spaces as well. And what's sad to me, and this is not my personal beliefs, but this is what I'm getting from her. She's from North Korea where they didn't have hot showers, mattresses, and where people were too poor to afford ingredients to constitute the need of a cookbook. And I'm saying flour, sugar, salt. And in that same breath, her same experience, she's anti-BLM organization. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? how she's from North Korea. She has a terrible experience coming up and she's still anti-BLM based off of her knowledge on what a good and a bad organization looks like. That is insane to me. <laughs> that is crazy. But back to the video. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Luke. I'm just wondering what your favorite fast food burger is here. Hamburger. <laughs> but even though Kim Jong Il said he uh, discovered the hamburger, <laughs> did you see that? Yeah, but he discovered everything. But I think it's it's pretty awesome food. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Wilson. I have a question. As a North Korean defector, what is life like in South Korea, and what type of support do you get from their government? Yeah, uh, South Korea was very tough. Mm -hmm. uh, I got heavily, heavily discriminated. And a lot of North Koreans cannot even get a job as a waitress in South Korea because of their accent. You know, we have a northern accent, they can tell. So it's very hard for North Korean to adjust in South Korea and then America. So I'm very lucky that I came to America and, you know, stopped being South Korean, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 
Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I was actually going to ask almost the exact same question because I'm studying abroad in South Korea um, next semester. But I was just wondering, I've also read your book and you said you experienced discrimination there. But I was wondering, is there like a still a big population of North Korean people who stay in South Korea? Or do you think the majority of them defect? But I know, as you said, it's a very small amount who actually make it to America. So if not America, are they just staying in South Korea or going elsewhere? Oh, mostly they are in China captured. Okay. So majority of North Koreans are in China and they, they end up in four places as a North Korean defector in China. One is you end up in organ harvesting. So they what? buy you and take your organs out and discard you. Uh, so oh my goodness. And one thing I want to say is how, notice how she said, make it to America. And a lot of these other countries, America is a promised land. And I'm not sitting here saying America is a heavenly promised land. I hope no one gets that from, from what I'm saying. But what I'm, what I'm actually saying is that they imagine America like a promised land. And to them, it is that. This life sounds terrible. Organ harvesting? What? Let's hear the rest of this. Second is you are bought in these brothers. Uh, they rape you until you die. Usually you die in six months. And then third place is where a town of men buy a girl, ship in and buy a girl, and then they rotate and rape her and she dies out. And last place is uh, sex chat rooms where they lock these girls indoor and they make them to perform sex acts in front of the camera. And then for that, these girls get fed and get in a hidden place. Mm -hmm. So this is a happening. And this is a thing I am here because there are, as I said, 300,000 of them are trapped in China mm -hmm. and don't know if there's any life for them. And I've been trying to spread this message in America and the land of the free. And one of the producers last year in Hollywood wanted to make a movie out of my story from my first book. And he sent me a movie script. And he says, China was my promised land. When I got to China, they gave me protection and refugee. I asked him, like, what the heck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right? And he said, this is the only way we can make a movie about North Korea in Korean Hollywood, by lying about China. And that's why no Michelle Obama or Joe Amal Clooney or none of these people would sit down with me, talk to me, because they all making money out of China. Mm. Wow. And that's why North oh Korean stories are buried deep down and nobody ever talk about this modern day genocide and Holocaust anywhere. Wow. So for me specifically, or just for anyone who is passionate about this as well, because I'm personally very interested in like Korean culture, I spoke to you earlier, um, but also in refugee policy specifically, what would your advice be to me or anyone who's passionate about helping um, North Korean, especially defectors? What do you think that I could do, honestly, moving forward? So there are two ways you can get involved. One is actual action, and is there's a lot of missionaries are still rescuing North Koreans from China to freedom. So you can join one of those mission groups, and in any way you can help. And second is, I guess we have to elect right leaders in America mm. that understand the threat of China, understand the corruption in American mainstream institutions, and they can they are willing to be the voice for the voiceless people. Mm. So I think that's two ways we can do as Americans. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Her story is insane. And her story should open your eyes, man. And I'm happy she's talking to these young students because they really need to hear this. This is insane. This is downright insane. You have any suggestions for me? Comment down below. I'm a fly, Joe, Joe, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.